Hey, this is a video about Darktable defaults because um, it came up in Facebook.com. If you weren't already in this, Darktable Unofficial is a Facebook group, which is kind of fun. Darktable Unofficial. And a question came up here about how to override um, defaults, and somebody mentioned that I had mentioned in one of my videos. Uh, I don't know where it is. But yeah, check out um, Join Darktable Unofficial if you haven't already. Uh, let's make that kind of a bouncing around community. I know there's a good, I think there's a French community. Je parle français, mais pas très bien. Um, but this would be really good to get an English speaking place where we can all talk about Darktable and ask questions and things. I've asked a couple of things and got some good answers. So the question came out about Darktable defaults. And one of my videos was mentioned, but I have this buried in a video. So I'm going to do just a video about how to override defaults in Darktable. Now, everything's gone green, and I don't know why. Still haven't got to the bottom of this. Why? When I go out of Darktable, and there's, it has a green cast when I come back in on the thumbnails. But basically, here we are. Um, I so need a break. So briefly my process now is when I do a shoot I deliver proofs but I don't want to just give them straight out of camera I don't want to give the, just a JPEG so I go through every single set like this one which looks okay in this preview but I want to go through and I take a whole set and I do a treatment of the whole set and this shoot has about eight sets so it takes me about an hour to deliver proofs but as you can see now this one this one is more dull. I don't know what Darktable is using for this rendering of the JPEG preview. Possibly just a base curve, I don't know. But you'll notice, as soon as I went into that image, it went darker. And that is because I don't like base curve. I don't like the default base curve, which for this is possibly that. Which I do like, but I like it all by itself, like it's a good approximation all by itself, but when I start to play around with an image and I can't get it the way I want, or when I, before I did this change, um, I would find that I, I couldn't get to where I wanted it to go because the base curve was already doing something that I didn't like. So what I did was, and I'm going to show you how to do this on something else, I created a preset called Flat. So probably what I did was it would have been something like that. I came in and I double clicked and I saved store new preset and then I told it what to apply to, which is basically raw. So we're going to do that in a sec. But when I, when you know, if you notice, I, when you come into every single image, um, there are the ones that are automatically there and I don't know if you can stop them being automatically there I think that's why I did this I don't think you've any control over whether base curve is there or not so instead of working out a way to make it go away from the auto I just have a flat one instead now there's two reasons I use this one is because like this I can't turn off base curve so instead of t fighting that I just make it apply a base curve that doesn't actually affect the image. The other time I do that is something like local contrast. So local contrast by default when it's switched on is 120%. So if I'm working on an image, I use local contrast nearly every nearly every photo. Sometimes I add it, sometimes I subtract it. But I used to find it jarring when I came in and I switched local contrast on and it would go to 120 because what I really want to do is switch it on and start here and decide do I want to add local contrast for this picture or do I want to take it away. Um, for skin issues, uh, for portraits with skin issues, I'll usually take it away because it's more flattering. If it's harsher light and I'm trying to make a point, like a higher contrast image, I'll add it. But 
but I mean this this is Shannon holy crap what amazing skin she actually came in <laughs> and said I just have to do my makeup and I looked at her and I said what and she had no makeup on at the time and she added a tiny bit of makeup her skin is flawless um, so I would probably I probably drop in this case I might go down to a, like a 95 just to add a bit of a glow but there you go so here's here's how you do it because here's another one I've decided I don't like when you switch on when you switch on shadows and highlights it automatically has the setting where it boosts the shadows and drops the highlights well really when I'm going to use this that's very rare setting for me what I really want to do is come in and say okay I think I'm going to drop those highlights and I want to start from a zeroed view so that my eye goes from zero to wherever I want it to be rather than this jarring boost and cut so here's here's what I'm gonna do and here's what I'm gonna to add to my stack so I'm gonna get those to zero uh, how do I do that with the how do I do that with in a way that's actually easy probably that near enough right click um, so it's effectively off it's effectively off right then I'm going to create a preset. I'm going to call it flat. And I'm going to auto apply this to matching images. So for me, I'm going to apply it to all raw images, which is pretty much everything. But look how powerful this is. I might actually I might actually auto apply some stuff to different F numbers because might might not might might do some white balance stuff on F numbers, although no, forget that. But super interesting how you can auto apply specific settings based on lenses or cameras or all that stuff. Super interesting. <clears throat> but anyway, so we're gonna apply this to all images that are raw, okay. So now if I go out and come into another image and we look at the stack. There we have a flat base curve, a zeroed local contrast, and a zeroed shadow and highlights, which is great. That's how I like to work. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, actually, I'm going to keep the thing rolling while I edit this set in case that's fun. But if you're leaving, if that's all you came here for. Um, please like and subscribe. It helps me be motivated. Um, everything I do is dark table GIMP and with a little bit of Portrait Pro which runs on Linux if you know how. Um, if you want to keep an eye on my work, Kiefer Honeyford Photography everywhere, Facebook.com and Instagram. Um, I'd love to have you follow me. Uh, da, 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 da. What else can I say? Not a whole lot. Please like, subscribe. Now let's go. I don't know why that does that. That's another video of mine is using Opera and faking the um, faking the user agent so that you can it thinks you're you're on a mobile and you can post from your desktop. That's another video. Check that out. Um, okay, so let's actually just hang, if you want to hang around, let's edit this set. Let's take the whole set uh, <coughs> and discard. All the settings and then we'll take an image that I like and we'll work that up so these are all same lighting same focal length same everything so I'm pretty sure I can work on one let's choose one uh, this was in my studio with a fan to camera left I've got a uh, I've got a I think a strip box I think this is a strip box 
I'm not really sure. I think it's either it's either a small strip box or a 30 inch octagon. Um, well, we can tell, can't we? Yeah, it's an octagon. And then I've got a bounce card, a cheap piece of foam core underneath her, and I've got a light a flash, I think, on a stand behind her hitting the black backdrop, which is about six feet away. Uh, but you can see the bounce card there for softening. Let's see, I like that. What the hell, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to do a quick edit on this. So see it popped we lost the bot base curve we lost the um that's pretty much it we lost the base curve this is like pure pure raw um let's do it all from scratch let's go through my whole stack i'm gonna, sh I'm gonna turn that on i'm gonna bump the exposure until i see red bump the exposure until I see dark around where I care about. That's maybe a bit much, but we're going to have to adjust anyway. I'm going to do a tiny S-curve. This is a very typical setup for me with a dark background. Tiny base curve, tiny tune curve, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of saturation. Um, a tiny bit of a change. To the equalizer to that curve to give it a pop of a something. Then I need to make some decisions. Um, gonna balance out the exposure again. I'm gonna take that off, and now I have to make some decisions about where I want to go with local contrast. If I want to go up or down, if I want to do any shadow or highlights. If I do go down, it's not going to be my much. But I think it is flattering. Maybe even just a night low 90s. Uh, and now, do I want to bring up the glow on that background a little bit and a little bit around the hair? See, if I just switched that on, it would have gone a big old kick in the face. But now that we have that preset, I think I'm going with just boosting those shadows a tiny bit to bring up bring up the shadows and pop against the background a little bit. Oh, I should have done this first. Because that's going to affect my... Yeah, first thing I usually do is white balance, duh. And that's changed everything, but yeah, so with that cooler white balance, everything is just kind of popping more. So do I still want that? I don't know. If I don't know, you don't know. Yeah, right there. So that is pretty much how I think that set is going to go. I'll probably end up with vignettes. Bring that up. Yeah. So if I'm doing a final image from this set, I would probably do more than that. But copy all. Control A, unselect that so we don't duplicate. Double up the stack, paste all, and those are ready to be given out as proofs. And I'll just do a quick eyeball to make sure I like it across the board. And yeah, I definitely do. Come on, click. There's no way I shot that out of focus. Pop. Well, maybe I did. No, there it is. 
Uh, very slow when I'm doing a screencast. But yeah, these are beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so that's ready for proof. That is the end of this video. Um, hope it's useful. Have a great day. Adios.